So a while ago I had the idea to test how strong the QR2 Lite actually was when it was released. It looked considerably beefier than the QR1 Lite was and yet it was still limited to low torque mode on most Fanatec bases, at least for high powered ones. The idea sat for a few months, it sat on my to-do list, but then all of a sudden the Gran Turismo DD Extreme launched, a 1300 quid wheelbase and wheel that was 15 newton meters and yet featured a QR2 Lite that was previously, or at least we thought, we all thought collectively, this was previously only rated to 8 newton meters, like the old QR1 Lite was. So on what basis do Fanatec believe that the QR2 Lite is able to withstand double what we previously thought the limit was? Well, to conduct my own tests, I enlisted the help of a good friend who runs this place, H2M Engineering in the Midlands. I asked them to make me a coupling plate that will bolt up to the QR1 and QR2 Lite and allow me to test them to destruction using the help of some torque wrenches. These wrenches allow you to measure the torque that you're putting through them. They give you a click when they reach the desired torque. So by doing this, we can measure how much torque it takes to make the QR1 and QR2 Lite fail. Now before I get into this, and I cannot stress this enough, this is a layman's test at best. There are multiple flaws in the testing method. I'm not an engineer, I'm just posing as one here because I don't have a big strong vice and big beefy torque wrenches at my disposal. I can't do this in the garage. And considering the sort of stuff that they usually make, the folks at H2M can make a little coupling plate that will do the job for me without skipping a beat. There are a couple of ways in which the tests are actually quite unfair to the QR and won't truly represent how strong or weak they really are and I'll highlight what these weaknesses are in the testing method. For one, I gave faulty instructions for the coupling plate, so I can only use four of the six flange bolts to attach the QR to the coupling plate. That introduces an obvious weakness, but I went ahead anyway with this in mind, that if the QRs fail at the flange and at low forces, then I need to go back to the drawing board and use all six bolts. But if they fail anywhere else other than the flange, then I know that we've got something useful out of it. Furthermore, the test that I'm doing can only apply a slow measured torsion force to the QR. That's not really representative of the sort of forces that the QR actually goes under when it's on your wheelbase. I can't replicate the shocks and knocks that you get, you know, the 15 newton meters this way and then suddenly the 15 newton meters the other way that causes sort of like lashing forces that might fatigue it over time when you multiply that by thousands. I can't replicate that. I can only do a single measured slow application of force. So it's not really representative of what the conditions are the QR goes under when it's being used by you. Another problem with using four bolts instead of the six equally distributed bolts on the flange is that it might actually cause the whole, the whole thing to twist and counterintuitively that might actually hide a weakness in the QR2 light which would only show itself if the mounts were rock solid. So that twisting action in a way, be a bit like how plane wings bend so that they don't break, this might bend instead of breaking in a certain way that, that might be encountered if it used all six bolts. So, so maybe I'm basically saying that the whole test is complete junk. Long story short, this test is only for fun and is only vaguely scientific. And if you can spot any other obvious flaws in the method of testing, then you know, pop them in the comments. I might learn something. Now, just because I can, I thought it would be a good idea to run the QR1 through the paces first before the QR2 Lite, because I think that this is a lot stronger than this. I want to test that theory. So we're going to run the QR1 through it first and see at what point this breaks, then move on to the QR2. Anyway, let's get into it. So this is how it's going to work. This torque wrench is going to go in the top here. So this torque wrench is set to 10 newton meters. And when I turn it and it gives me a little click, that's when the knob reached 10 newton meters. So we're going to escalate how many newton meters are being put through the QR1. I'm just going to see how many newton meters it takes to break it. Is it scientific? Probably not. Oh yeah, just a side note. I paid for these. So, you know, give us a like and subscribe. I'm chucking some money down the drain here. Okay. So this is now 10 newton meters on the wrench. Easy. 15. 20. 25. Easy. 30 newton meters. 35 newton meters. 
40 newton meters. Luckily, we've got some big, big torque wrenches that can go up to way crazy numbers. 40 newton meters. 45 newton meters. Easy. 50 newton meters. Oh, there you go. Let's try it a few more times. 50 newton meters. Right, so it can easily handle 50 newton meters, even the QR1. Just so you can see it, it's set to 50 newton meters. Let's stick it on there again, just so you see. There we go. So the QR1 didn't crack at 50 newton meters, so we've got a torque wrench that goes up to 100. So we're going to see whether that cracks it. 55. 60. Going to hold this table steady. Might be the uh, pull the whole table over. 65. 70. 75. There's some movement, but it's not cracking. 80 newton meters. Still not giving up. 85. 90. 95. Oh, it's getting tense now. 100 newton meters, this is the limit of this torque wrench. And I can't believe it, but the QR1 has made it all the way up to 100. Hundred newton meters and the QR1 is still intact. So we need to go up to the even bigger torque wrench now just to defeat the QR1. Uh oh. Oh, there you go then. I think that's the keyway. The keyway's given way. The quick release didn't break or, or, or shatter or anything impressive. The QR1 base side and the QR1 light wheel side are fused together. Not the explosive failure that I was kind of hoping for, but. 100 newton meters is a lot of force. The QR1 held up better than I thought. So I'm now attaching the QR2 light to our little coupling plate, ready for its turn on the torque wrench. So we're going to start at 100, because I'm pretty confident it's going to take that. So now it's the turn of the QR2 light, and we've got a QR2 wheel base, a QR2. Um, no, QR2 base side adapter here, metal version with lovely little flat edges that can go in this vise. And I'm going to put the QR2 light on it and uh, give it the big torque wrench and see if, when and how it fails. QR2 light attached to this custom made coupler. And uh, stick a massive torque wrench on here and then twist it till it or I break. So here we go, 100 newton meters then. 100 newton meters, oh, nice, lovely, positive click. 120. Easy, I think this is gonna go all the way, you know. 135. 150. 165. I'm not sure whether that was a torque wrench clicking that first, that first little faint click you heard. Sounded a bit disconcerting to me, but it's done it. 165, 180. Sorry to any darts fans that compulsively say 180 out loud. 180. Still going. 195. 210. 
<laughs> oh, crikey. Two, two, five. Gosh. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit because look closely at the, at the, uh, the splines or spines running down the middle of the QR. They're actually twisting. So they're twisting and flexing. So here's hoping I don't go flying and knock the camera out of the way. Right, we're still on, we're still on 225. Oh. Right. We're still on 225. The whole thing is basically flexing. So I'm going to move it out of the way again, because I reckon this is, something's going to break. Something is going to break now. Something's going to break. We're still on 225, remember? So this is me now. I am really bracing myself. Two two five. It's still hanging on. It's it's bending like elastic, but it's still hanging on. Two forty. Oh, here we go. That's it. That's done it. All right. That's disappointing. All right. What I feared might have come true, has come true. Because we only had four of the six flange bolts in there, the flange is what's given away first. It gave way at 240, 240 Newton meters. Here we go. Uh, you might still be able to see that. There you go, 240. So that, that bit there says 240, it goes down to that bit and we're on zero right here. So 240 Newton meters it took to basically shear the QR2 light. Maybe if we had six bolts in there, it would go up even further. The QR2 light has basically defeated our test conditions, if you ask me, because it's our test conditions that failed first. It's us putting four bolts on instead of six that killed it. The QR2 light has done way, way better than I expected, and the QR1 light the QR1 light in particular did better than I expected. However, the stories speak for themselves. The QR1 light had issues because it would just kind of just break out of nowhere. Maybe people were putting the wrong kind of forces on it. I say wrong kind of forces. People are going to do what people are going to do. And if it breaks, no matter how it breaks, if it breaks whilst in like, active duty, so to speak, then it's not fit for purpose. But the QR2 light took double the newton meters it took more than double the newton meters of force to break this compared to the QR1, and it broke in a more localized way that we could blame on ourselves. Maybe if we did the test again with six bolts instead of a four, it would go even higher. But I think there's no doubt about it. The QR2 light is much stronger than the QR1 light. Even looking at it, I always question whether or not Fanatec were being really cautious with that eight newton meter figure. And in the end, it broke because we kind of, we tied one hand behind its back by only using four bolts instead of six because I gave them the wrong measurements for this. So after that test, and I repeat again, not really scientific, plenty of flaws in the test and particularly the QR2 light only failed at the flange in my opinion because there's only four bolts attached instead of six. So an obvious flaw, we kind of tied one hand behind its back when it comes to this. But even so, my own personal opinion is that it really kind of outdid what I expected. I expected it to be much stronger than a QR1 light, but 245 newton meters of force, I think it was, that was featured there, that's a lot of force. That's, that's me basically putting nearly all my weight down on that torque wrench and bracing for impact. It's a shame it didn't explode in an entertaining and satisfying way. It kind of just peeled apart. That's a shame. The proof will be in the pudding. If these start showing up getting broken by people in the wild, then it doesn't matter what my test says. If that starts happening in any mass numbers like the QR1 light kind of did, then it needs a rethink. 
So time will tell. Okay, so woke up this morning, did some video editing and watched the whole thing back and noticed something today that I didn't notice yesterday. At the 225 Nm meters mark, the QR2 kind of splits. I, I can just maneuver this so you can see it, but there's two cracks either side of the square kind of receptacle here where it goes onto the base side. And they gave way, or I reckon they both gave way at the 225 Newton meters mark. Maybe if we'd had six bolts in, it would have gone a lot further, but this is pretty good for what it is. And maybe Fanatec aren't completely unfounded in their belief that this can safely handle 50 Newton meters all day long. And if that's the case, then, you know, unlock it for the rest of us. If we're using the QR2 Lite, you should be able to use it for, you know, the 12 Newton meter club spot DD, surely. And one last thing before I go, uh, as I said earlier, I've busted up a QR2 light. I've damaged the QR2 base side as well. It's, it's kind of, it's all kind of scratched up from the vise because I put a lot of force through it. And I've also knackered up this QR1 light. They're free anyway, so don't worry about that. But the QR1 base side, that's also knackered because it was put in the vise uh, under high forces. So I've scrapped quite a few parts here out of my own pocket in the name of science or vague science donate a like and subscribe i'll appreciate it i think it's worth that don't you um hopefully it is but there you go i'll leave you to it until next time